Thank you. So I will put Venus now a little bit closer to exoplanets because we are talking now about uh, Venus transiting the Sun. These are quite rare events, but uh, let's say it's exceptional. But they provide useful information on the upper atmosphere of Venus because, as uh, maybe you know already, when Venus enters or exits the transit, a faint ring of light appears here, starting from the polar regions, and due to light refracted by the upper atmosphere of Venus and reaching the observer. So by exploiting this uh, uh, spectacular sight, uh, we can uh, try to investigate the physical properties of the atmosphere at the level where refraction occurs. Now, our main motivations are provided by the first attempts that we made in the using data of the Venus transit in 2004. This basically was the first time that uh, the aural of Venus was observed with modern techniques, a kind of rediscovery of, uh, of the aural with uh, real quantitative measurements. And uh, we were able to show that the aural is uh, due to refraction uh, that is produced in the mesosphere of the planet in a region where transitions occur between uh, uh, solar anti-solar circulation and the zonal circulation. So a very interesting and puzzling uh, region where Venus expressed observe uh, uh, variability in space and time. And the interest of uh, performing this exercise is that, uh, of course, uh, by, when considering the aural along the limb at ingress or regress, in fact, we are exploring basically all the latitudes at the same time in an interval just a few hours uh, at the, the time uh, of duration of the transit over the, in front of the solar disk. So we get, can get a snapshot of the atmosphere at all latitudes at the same time. And um, a further motivation for using data obtained during transit in 2012, the last transit uh, we will uh, probably see, will be patient for the next one in about a little bit more than one century from now, but we will see, we will be there. Uh, so further motivation is that uh, Venus Express performs the, the SWAR experiment concerning the uh, sunrise and sunsets of the, of, of the sun observed uh, close to uh, the, 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 the limb of Venus. And uh, SWAR is able so to probe the atmosphere of the planet at a single latitude at a time. And uh, during the transit in 2012, uh, Venus, was, uh, uh, Venus Express, of course, was still active. Uh, this is to scale the orbit of uh, Venus Express as projected onto the solar disk, and uh, was programmed to uh, perform the SWAR experiment during the transit itself, thus providing us a useful reference at a latitude that, uh, at that, in that, in that case, was uh, at 49 degrees north. So what we did was first to compare some uh, remote observations to uh, what uh, Venus Express observed during the transit. And for that, we used uh, a very rich data set obtained by the Solar Dynamic Observatory uh, from which the previous animation was derived. It, it, it consists of uh, hundreds of images covering the ingress, hundreds covering the egress, so a very good time resolution uh, with that spatial resolution which is indicated there. And uh, uh, just a little bit less than four seconds between two images, so very good uh, resolution in time. So we were able to make, perform the photometry of the, the, the aural all along the limb by fitting a Gaussian to the radial profile of the limb and uh, subtracting a variable, a kind of sloped background there. And uh, so we derived light curves, one light curve per, per basically uh, degree of latitude. Uh, we, you can uh, see here the brightness of the aural at different latitudes as a function of the position of Venus with respect to the solar limb. And you can see that uh, the polar regions, those extended further to the right, are those for which the uh, brightness lasts longer, while in, uh, intermediate latitudes or equatorial latitudes fall, uh, fall faster. So something sp specific happens it, uh, in the polar region that makes the owl brighter there. 
So what we did then with our data? Well, we took uh, the SUAR profile measured during the transit, which is represented in this plot. We added uh, a transition, a simple model for the, aer aer the aerosol absorption above the cloud deck, uh, modeling the transition between the opaque cloud region and the transparent atmosphere above. So we took this uh, profile by Wilke et al. 2009. And uh, everything was put in a multi-layer model in which uh, each layer is independent in terms of density or refractivity. This is very similar to what is done with the uh, for stellar occultations when you have a body with an atmosphere. The only difference here is that uh, you have to take into account an extended source, which is the sun, and not a point like source as a star. So what happens is that uh, we measure the, uh, the, our measured photometry is uh, equivalent to the uh, uh, some of the contribution of all the layers. And what we get by using this SWAR profile is uh, here, so the continuous green line uh, very close to the uh, measured data points of the arrow. So what we see that immediately that uh, uh, the arrow of Venus can be uh, at 49 degrees latitude, can be well reproduced by the SWAR profile, uh, with exception maybe of very high altitudes here, where there is some discrepancy within a, about two sigma of the SWAR density profile. Okay, so then uh, uh, at this point, we were, we attempted to be brave enough to invert the process. So going from photometry to vertical profile and deriving so the vertical profile at all latitudes and also the altitude of the aerosol, the cutoff uh, layer for the, for the flux. And so in the next two slides, I will summarize very quickly the results we got. And uh, okay. So here we go. Here you have the altitude of the, the cutoff altitude due to the arrows opacity. So this part refers to the ingress, the right part to the egress, and you see an overlap region where the two measurements uh, agree. And you clearly see the depression associated to the polar vortex. In this case, the polar vortex is not centered on the pole, but it is uh, shifted towards the morning uh, along the morning terminator to the left here. And we can also compare this uh, uh, profile to the opacity measured by Venus Express and see kind of agreement. Even if in this case, in the case of Venus Express, the single measurements are obtained at different epochs, different orbits. So they are not simultaneous as, we, uh, as our profile is. Now we can put everything together. And here you have the same uh, cutoff altitude plotted, but also the color map represents a snapshot of the temperature at the terminator. It's the first time I think we see this kind of maps from observations in which you put together nearly a, a very wide range of latitudes and uh, uh, the temperature associated with it. So here I have no time to go into details, but just to uh, clarify, uh, any vertical line in the plot represents the result of a single inversion. So there are no error bars here, but in, let's say that around in the cold layer here in blue, uh, the uncertainties are of the, of the order of 20 Kelvin, 20, 30 Kelvin. And uh, we clearly see that the, uh, this uh, cold layer is uh, ubiquitous. There are some variations in latitude. And uh, the lowest part and the highest part are not well modeled in our case because there the error bars grow uh, faster. So uh, our uh, results also explain why the aural is fainter at egress because the cloud layer reaches a higher altitude here. So it means that uh, there is less light that is reaching the observer. And uh, I conclude with some uh, perspectives. We are now uh, going to analyze uh, thousands of images collected by small telescopes on the ground in different wavelengths. Uh, they sh show a very, very good contrast. When you collect the images, you can see here the silhouette of Venus projected against a very faint uh, solar corona. So we get the best possible contrast when the aural, the aural is the faintest. Uh, here is the aural shows up right at the pole, the faintest portion. And we will also analyze uh, data from the Hinode telescope 
which observe in different wavelengths. You can see here the photometer of the hour along the limb at a given moment during the transit. You can see there are differences in colors in the flux. So we hope to constrain aerosol properties by analyzing the, and modeling these differences. Thank you.